Welcome back everyone. As you know, VTOL is a big topic on this channel, so it is time after the SVX vertical to design a complete new jet where all the learnings and everything that we experienced over the last year can be put in to make it best work as possible. And in this video series, I want to show you from the first step how we develop this jet and all the steps and all the problems we have to solve. I'm working on this project together with Mark Philip Wendahl, a dedicated industry designer and fan of futuristic aircraft designs. And together we want to bring this sophisticated JRM-1 VTOL jet from scratch to reality. And right in front of me you can see the first step from a VTOL jet. This is to decide which engine and which leveling concept you will use. And I did many test flights since 2014 with my first VTOL takeoff. I made a lot of experience and see what is working, what is not working. And so I took the best ones, which I tested over the time and put it in this new project. Let's start on the front. This is our front fan. This is for pitch and also for yaw. And here we use a Vemotech MIDI fan, Evo. This has a very good static thrust is super lightweight and super efficiency. The main engines, which will be sweepable on 90 degree, that are for forward flight and also for hovering. I choose the JP fans. They are super powerful. They are super efficient on high speed flights. They have an amazing sound and they are also super durable. And then we go to our wing fans. To, uh, that, that are also leveling fans. They are for roll and also for pitch. And here I choose something special. That's the test run with the Avenger V3, 1115 kV for the new VTOL project. And we got 2000. 220 grams from, from 1400 watts. That's perfect. Two of them will be installed. I think the prop will be painted. Painting the lift fan propeller. First step is roughening the surface with this fleece. These are original motors from X-Class quadcopters, so from very, very big quadcopters from race copters. These are super efficient and super powerful outrunner motors and they run on six blade propellers because on the, on the lift fans they are used for maximum static thrust efficiency because on hovering you know the airspeed is zero, we are just hovering. So we have to put our electric energy we have in maximum thrust. And that's why we need a big diameter on the propeller and a low RPM. This gives us what we want. And here you can see it installed in the wing. You also can see for a big propeller you need a big wing. When we compare it to the SUX, this wing has much more depth. And that's the concept. Here we can go a little bit into history. This is the original lift fan from the wing from the SUXR vertical. And that's the engine. You see it's quite small when it will be compared to the new one. And also this one is much more efficient and powerful. Also the diameter of the lift fan. See this is 5 inches and this is 70 millimeter, so it's about just a half. And this is one very early concept of the swivable main fans. They are 70 millimeter. You can see them here in the very first SUXR style stadium.
And as you saw, here was also a second decision done, the leveling concept. You know, there are, there are a lot of solutions um, where you can put in your leveling fans. And I decide for the three copter design. So here we will have the CG. These main engines will stay and will be mounted in the CG. So there is no momentum from them, just lift upwards. And these three uh, fans all around will level the whole thing as a three copter. So we have three motors and under the front motor, there will be vanes, movable vanes, which can direct the air to the left and the right. And so we will make or gain uh, your momentum. This is the concept and one reason is we got the minimum number of engines. They, they can be integrated quite good in an airplane design. The big fans in the wing because here we have a big area and a smaller fan in the front because here is, here is not so much area. And also this is a standard flight controller design. So uh, this is a other big topic, the flight controller. And if you, if you got special designs, you need a special flight controller. And this three copter design is integrated as a normal firmware in most of the controllers. So the whole hovering topic with the flight leveling will be much easier when you got a standard concept. In the next step, you have to do some small calculations. The overall thrust is super important. You have to know your maximum thrust on the test stand from all your components and the estimated takeoff weight from your final jet. So here we got it. The, the estimated takeoff weight will be around seven kilograms. The SUX weighed about 6.5. So the JRM1 is a bit bigger. So we say seven kilogram and the integrated maximum thrust of all components when they run on full throttle would be 15.7 kilogram. So more than two times of the maximum takeoff weight. The integrated thrust should, should be two times of your takeoff weight because while integrating and following the next steps, you will lose a lot of thrust. So with this formula, two times takeoff weight uh, should be your integrated thrust. Then you are mostly safe. Yeah, we, you see here we got an extra margin and here is again the three copter design. You see the, the wing engines, they got 2.2 kilograms thrust. This was tested here on the test stand. We got our main engines with four kilograms thrust each installed on the CG and the front engine with 3.3 kilogram. When you choose your engines and you have an idea of your airplane, then the next step is to design your airplane this way that all the engines fit into your airplane design. For instance, you can see here on the SUX, the wings are not that big. Um, so these big diameter lift fans couldn't be integrated into the wing. That's why the SUX got much smaller lift EDFs with less efficiency and less thrust. And for our new jet, we are orientated on these uh, fifth generation fighters with these um, big and wide fuselage, big wings. They also have the form of a triangle and there you can integrate much bigger fans. Yeah? So the, the design of your jet has to be adapted to your lift fan concept that everything fits to each other. And when you got this, then you can start with the details. And this was especially adapting the thick wing to the rest of the airplane, that the whole thing become smooth and one part shaped. And here you can see the second design stage where the transition from wing to fuselage becomes more and more smooth. And after some weeks of designing, we get closer and closer to what we want to have. A VTOL jet that looked shaped out of one piece. 
There will be still details to redesign, but at the moment we are super happy with our JRM1. Different colors are always a good help to evaluate your design. And here are the main dimensions of the JM1. With over 2 meter length it will be a quite big. There you can see it compared to the composite version of the SUX. This will be a quite big jet. So now Mark and me will go on working on this fantastic project. If you want to learn more about Mark's work, you can check out his Instagram, a link you will find underneath in the video descriptions. Also a lot of links how you can support this channel that I can show you as much as possible from our project. I wish you a nice week and see you in the next video. Bye bye.